Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmuelkoffer, and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute here in downtown Chicago. And on today's episode, we are going to talk about what is sleep hygiene. And sleep hygiene is something that's super important for everybody because it is simple things that we can do to help improve our sleep quality and quantity um, each night, you know, and on a routinely basis. And in a previous episode, I did talk about why sleep health is super important for the brain and your brain health. And this is why I didn't have enough time in that episode to necessarily talk about tips for sleep. Um, I get a lot of patients that have problems with sleep. And whether that be after concussions or, um, or traumatic brain injuries, or just that they have uh, some low level anxiety or they have other things going on, that they have sleep issues. And so I always start with some sleep hygiene tips because these tips are like first and foremost, the best things that we can do versus taking a pill or taking a supplement, um, taking a um, drug that may have some unwanted side effects. Um, I know people in the past have taken, you know, antihistamines to sleep, or they have taken aspirin to fall asleep or melatonin. And there's a lot of things out there, but just to start with some sleep hygiene techniques um, should be beneficial. And so that's mostly what we're going to talk about today. Um, I have a couple papers to show you. Um, one, two, we'll just spend very, very brief amount of time on there. But sleep hygiene has been shown to help outcomes uh, with sleep after a variety of problems or um, with a variety of diseases or, or issues. So let's go right away to the first one here. And so this is just a article from Brain Injury and it's sleep outcomes following sleep hygiene related interventions for individuals with traumatic brain injury. And so it's a systematic review on all the different um, articles that have looked at sleep hygiene and traumatic brain injury. And so this one um, clearly shows at the end that sleep hygiene related interventions, either isolated or in combination with other treatments, can help reduce sleep difficulties post concussion, post TBI. Um, like I said, I get a lot of patients that, that have had concussions or TBIs and they have long lasting sleep problems. And so we always start with sleep hygiene to start. Uh, or to start with. So I just wanted to kind of show that article. Then there's another one here. Uh, it's a focus on geriatrics and sleep and sleep hygiene. Um, it's just a little editorial talking about how um, the geriatric population have problems with sleep. And this can lead to things like fatigue, uh, sleepiness during the day, mood problems, difficulty with concentration, injuries, high blood pressure, other diseases like heart disease, diabetes. So we know sleep has a, has a big um, uh, focus or a big importance to our health. And so um, whether you're young or old, we need to get people to, to learn how to sleep better. And so there were some, um, some tips given here, just like educating the patient and the caregiver to have regular sleep times, regular sleep routines, um, getting plenty of bright light during the day, daily exercise, um, avoiding caffeine, alcohol, tobacco, maybe taking a warm bath before bed. So there's a lot of things, just a lot of tips here. And so I just wanted to show that, you know, sleep hygiene is studied and it is out there. And so the article that I want to focus on, just because I think it has a lot of great tips, um, especially since it's a lot of tips that I use, and then I'll kind of summarize it at the end, um, is this one. And so this is from 2019. It's from the International Journal of Sports and Medicine. It's actually looking at sleep hygiene for optimizing recovery in athletes. So technically we are all athletes. We all move on a daily basis. Um, we all try to exercise for the most part. And so we all should be looking to optimize our recovery um, from, our, from our daily troubles, whether that be stress or, or exercise or work. Um, even just sitting can be, can be troublesome, right? And so this article looked mostly at elite athletes. Um, and they looked at the, the negative side effects of sleep deprivation, whether that be reaction time and accuracy, uh, vigor, some maximal strength. This is why like driving when you're tired is not very good either. And that's why it's 
um, it's promoted to you know get good rest um, before you drive and to get off the road if you are tired because of these issues. Uh, and then also cognitive functions like judgment and decision making are also altered with sleep deprivation. And so again, here at the end, to battle sleep deprivation, athletes sometimes seek supplements, maybe, maybe medications that have potentially serious side effects. So improving sleep quality can be simple and effective um, if we use maybe sleep hygiene techniques. And so there's a table at the end that I want to go to. I will turn this here. Um, wrong way, I'm sorry about that. And okay, so these were some of the sleep hygiene techniques that they talked about in this study, okay? And so first one, don't go to bed until you're sleepy, right? If you aren't sleepy, get out of bed and do something until you are. This is, this is kind of like, you know, of course, you know, it makes sense, like only go to bed if you're tired. Because if you're sitting there laying in bed, it's probably not a good thing for you. So this is, you know, number one, this is, this is a good recommendation. Another one, regular bedtime routines, rituals that help you relax, prepare your body for bed. So this to me is, is super important. Um, I think you should try to go to bed at the same time every night. You should have your own like wind down routine. Um, for me, that is to um, let my dog out and then brush my teeth, I floss, um, I do a little bit of meditation and uh, very short and it all takes about like 15, 20 minutes tops. Um, I think this is just a great way for me to kind of wind down and relax before, before I go to bed. Um, other tips that they say here, like reading, you could read before bed, take a warm bath. Um, there's many things that you can do um, to, to help just kind of prepare your body, just kind of uh, take all the stresses of the day off you and start and get ready to sleep. Um, another one, try to get up at the same time every morning. This is huge. I think I agree with this wholeheartedly that on the weekends and the holidays, you should really only vary your wake up time by about 45 minutes to maybe an hour tops um, daily. And so, you know, I wake up at 515, 530 during the week on the weekends. The most I'm sleeping into is like 615, 630. Um, I never sleep in past seven and rarely can I make it that long anyway. Um, but this is just something that's really important because it keeps you on a good circadian rhythm, a daily clock that basically says, hey, this is when I'm supposed to get up and therefore I'm tired by this time at the night and that's when I should go to bed. Um, try to get a full night's sleep every night, avoid naps during the day. This is a really important one too. Um, if, you, if you do well at night, then you don't need naps. And that can really just like keep your body on a good clock um, prevent you from being groggy after naps as well. This is a cool one. Okay, so use the bed for sleep and intimacy only. So I've been told multiple times, um, I, follow, uh, um, I follow some sleep doctors on Instagram, and of course, the bed should only be used for sleep and sex. Those are the only two things. You shouldn't be doing work. You shouldn't be watching TV. You shouldn't be on your laptop or computer. You shouldn't be scrolling through Facebook. Um, it should, your bed should only be for sleep and sex only. And that's it. Um, it is, it is your place to, to get rest. Um, I, I really like that one. I think that's one really important. These are a couple of kind of obvious ones. Avoid caffeine, um, especially, you know, after lunch, like that when that two o'clock, you know, kind of grogginess hits, it's not, it's not a caffeine problem. You know, it's not a caffeine deficiency. Um, there might be other things, other factors that are causing you to be groggy then. So, there, look for other alternatives. I personally try to finish my caffeine by like 9 a.m. every morning because I don't want it to continue to stay in my body and then affect my sleep. Um, avoid alcohol if possible. This is another big one. If you drink alcohol before you go to sleep, chances are you're not going to sleep as well. Um, alcohol inhibits a lot of the processes that naturally occur during sleep. And so um, for me, I've noticed that you know, if it's, if I'm drinking, just have one beer, like a couple hours before bed, that's going to affect my sleep. So in the day, you know, it might metabolize and it might be okay. But 
Um, don't smoke cigarettes. We'll just leave it at that one. Don't smoke cigarettes. Don't use cat. Don't use nicotine. Um, avoid high intensity exercise right before bed. This is another important one, right? Because high intensity exercise is going to increase your sympathetic response, that fight or flight, that stress response, increase your cortisol, which you should be kind of winding down at that point, um, rather than getting your body and your, your heart rate going. Um, and I love this one. Okay. Make sure your bedroom is quiet, as dark as possible and a little bit on the cool side. Okay. So we should, we should be in a quiet, cool place to sleep. Um, it, it should be as dark as possible. Like you shouldn't be able to see your hand in front of your, in front of your face because it should be so dark. Um, if, if it means like blackout curtains, maybe you have to get blackout curtains. If it means, um, a mask, I wear a sleep mask every night because I think it just helps me just stay, stay asleep. I don't, I don't wake up because, you know, there's, there's street lights or car lights uh, going by I'm kind of in a busier part of the city, more main street. And, and I want to avoid those light distractions. Um, then of course, as quiet as possible. So hey, maybe you need earplugs. Um, and then the last one is the cool side. This is really important because the cooler you are at night, the lower your body temperature can go. The lower your body temperature, the lower your heart rate goes, the more rest and rejuvenation you're going to feel. Um, so these are, these are really important ones. Um, down below, they just have other sleep tips, which I think are also really important. Uh, we may not get through all of these, but um, they're here. And so avoiding blue light. Avoiding blue light at least two hours before you go to bed. So this is blue light is from the sunlight. Our sunlight gives off blue light, but all of our computers, our smartphones, our laptops all give off blue light as well. So if you're avoiding these electronics before bed, TVs give off as well. Avoiding these electronics two hours before you go to bed, that's going to prevent that high frequency blue light into your eyes that is basically telling you, hey, it's daytime, we should be staying up and staying awake. At the same time, you could always just use blue light blockers. There are many blue light blocker um, glasses or products out there. My I wear contacts and my glasses uh, that I wear at night have blue light blocking um, effects in them. And so I wear them every night um, after I take my contacts out, which is generally, you know, five or six o'clock, depending on the night. Um, at the same time, by avoiding blue light before bed, you should get as much natural sunlight during the day. And this is a tough one because a lot of times we're stuck indoors. And so if you can wake up and get some sun right away, get some light, open up the curtains, um, get some sunlight naturally right away into your, um, into your eyes, that kind of sets your circadian rhythm, says, hey, it's morning, it's wake, I should be waking up. Um, let's say it's a groggy day, it's uh, raining out. Let's say it's the winter and you have to wake up early and the sun's not up yet. This is where you can use a lamp. So there are a lot of wake up lamps that are out there. You, know, you can get some on Amazon that it's basically starts at a very low light. And then over maybe 15, 20 minutes, it builds up to where it like brightens the whole room. And this can kind of uh, mimic the sunrise and it can really help you wake up in the morning. Um, uh, my, my wife actually uses one of these and sometimes she wakes up later than me. So I don't get the effects in the winter. Um, but at the same time, I'm also wearing a mask. So I'd rather do that. And then I just kind of get out of bed and I try to get as much natural light um, afterwards. So um, another one, don't hit the snooze button. If you hit the snooze button, you're basically just like prolonging um, the prolonging the sleepiness, the grogginess, but you're not actually getting any more restful sleep. Um, the dawn simulator clock. So I just talked about there. The, if you use your computer at, at night, adjust the light or use blue light blocking glasses. Okay, that's right there. Meditation can be helpful. I talked about that possibly before bed. Um, so higher carbohydrates at night may improve sleep. The reason why is because carbohydrates actually help to get tryptophan that comes from proteins into, into your brain and tryptophan turns into melatonin. So sometimes people benefit from a little bit of carbohydrates right before bed um, if you have trouble falling asleep. Everyone's a little bit different. I'm not. I'm, I'm more of the um, 
I like to be not eating like three hours before I go to bed. I think that's a that's a better recommendation to start with. Try to not eat three hours before you go to bed and see if that helps you fall asleep. If you have problems just falling asleep, then maybe you do need a little bit of carbohydrates right then. Um, topical magnesium, of course, met melatonin in foods, tart cherry juice, raspberries, walnuts, almonds. I think bananas have some as well. You could try those. Um, and then don't fall asleep with the TV. Again, we shouldn't be having the TV on in our bedroom anyway while we're in, our, in bed. It should be as quiet as possible. Um, herbal supplements possibly can be helpful. Um, there are a lot of them out there. CBD is one of them. Again, talk to your doctor. Uh, and consider reducing your fluid intake, right? So you don't have to get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. Um, cooling your body temperature may improve sleep. We already talked about that. Checking your mattress to make sure that it's most comfortable. And then, uh, okay, and then recovery from exercise. So reduce your external stressors in life. Of course, when you have a little bit of anxiety, you might have insomnia to go with it, right? So really trying to get your body into a good mood state. If you're one of those people that are always waking up at the same time in the middle of the night, it could be a blood sugar thing. Maybe you, um, maybe you are hungry and your body's waking you up because you have a lack of, a lack of blood glucose. And so that's something where you want to eat maybe a little bit of fat right before bed, have a little bit of olive oil or coconut oil, uh, maybe a half an avocado right before bed, just to kind of um, balance out that blood sugar and see if that helps uh, you make it through the night without waking up. So that was uh, a little bit longer than I expected. So there are, there are definitely a lot of tips. Um, and so of all the ones that were talked about, my big ones are getting on a very good sleep routine. And that means waking up around the same time and going to bed around the same time. I'm like a 9.15, 9.30 to 5.15 to 5.45. And that's on the weekends, I sleep maybe until like you know, 6, 6.30 at the latest. Um, and so that's, that's number one, good sleep routine. Next one, try to not eat right before bed. Try to uh, you know, have two or three hours so that your nervous system can be more prepared, your body can be more prepared for the sleep versus trying to break down foods. Um, but of course, that varies for everyone and you might need to sleep or you might need to eat a little bit before you go to bed. Um, and then another one is don't do anything in your bed that doesn't involve sleep or sex. Like this is just a huge one. So many people want to watch TV before bed in their bed and that just really affects them, especially if they're not wearing like blue light blockers and they're basically just telling their brain that they should still be awake. Um, so those are some of my big ones, but again, we talked about many today. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have any suggestions for future topics, uh, I would love to hear them. So please leave them below as well. So really, you know, kickstart your, your, your health with improving your sleep and, and using these sleep hygiene techniques it would be great. So thank you very much and stay healthy.